Today is Saturday, the 27th of May, 2023. Uh, May 27th is significant to me because 32 years ago today, uh, I stood on the Yellow Footprints Marine Corps boot camp. So anyways, uh, I now have two wings uh, on the stands, and which means that I get to start fitting the skins. Uh, super <laughs> excited to be doing that. But before I do, um, I've just got these uh, kind of little ad hoc supports in the center of the stand. I'm gonna make something a little bit more sturdy. Uh, so that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Shouldn't take very long. I've said that before. Uh, I'll get that done and then start fitting the skins. So it's gonna be fun. Happy Memorial Day weekend to you all. Uh, let's remember those who went before us. So over a couple of minutes here, you'll see me build the center span supports for the wings. Um, and uh, it really didn't take much longer than that. I can proudly say that this was a uh, measure twice, cut once situation. <laughs> Finally uh, learned my lesson. So um, basically in the foreground right here, you see a two by eight laying there. I'll cut a couple sections there to kind of be the base uh, and then some lengths of two by four doubled up to be the posts. Um, and yeah, pretty simple stuff, but I, the wood stuff, the woodwork stuff is actually pretty satisfying because it's very forgiving. And when you're doing stuff like this, it's fairly rough. It's not super precise. What I did was um, I measured um, the distance from the floor to the, to the rear spar um, where it's supported by the posts, like it, it either the inboard or outboard end, and then I, and then I cut a half inch less than that, so I have room to work some shims in there uh, to get the fit exact. Um, and then if I stepped away for a minute there, basically once I've got the two pieces. Oh, I think I'm getting to it now. Once I've got the two pieces of two by four. Uh, Put together, I just run inside to the uh, to the bandsaw to make sure that they're flush with each other on both ends, and get them mounted up on the two by eight, and then placed underneath um, those center spans. It makes a big difference. Obviously, you don't want the spar sagging, um, but I noticed when I was hanging the skins, um, making fine adjustments to the height of these supports in the middle um, made a big difference in, in the ease or difficulty in hanging the skins uh, to keep all of those holes in alignment. So a uh, simple project. Oh yeah, so here we go. Just a little bit of wood glue, clamp them together, nail them together, and then run them inside to the, to the uh, sander. <laughs> what am I trying to think of? The belt sander. Yeah, uh, to get those two ends nice and clean and flush. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's what I'm running in there doing right now. So it, uh, at any rate, um, it's worth the effort to do something that allows you to use, you know, leave some space to you so that you can use little wood shims. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, if you go into Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever, um, you can get these packets of uh, wood shims, probably where the windows and, and stuff are. Uh, packets of wood shims for like four bucks and they'll last you forever. Um, and I think once I get this thing in here, I've, I've put in a picture that kind of shows you the finished product and then how I use the shims. But uh, even when you're hanging the skins, um, you can just sort of reach under there and make fine adjustments to those shims to get the the height of that uh, support exactly where you want it so everything fits together um, really nicely which by the way um, I'll talk about it a little bit more here in the video but um, I gotta say that skinning these wings was much easier than skinning 
um, any of the parts of the empennage kit because of the, let's see. Okay, so on the right, at the top, right under the spar, you can see a couple of those shims wedged under there. That's the finished product there. It works quite well. Uh, so we're getting into, or I'm getting into, skinning the wings, um, which I'm super excited about. But first, I have to clean the shop because it's it's a never-ending process uh, every day you're making piles of aluminum dust and shavings and and whatnot um fitting this first skin right here you you begin with the upper inboard skin uh right there there's a doubler uh that goes underneath the wing walk and what you see me is going back and forth here to figure it out when you first grab that doubler off the shelf it looks like it's completely symmetrical but it's not um, on one end of it, meaning fore or aft end, there's a little jog in the, the whole pattern. And, um, so that's what you saw me measuring up. So if you're doing this and you're like, uh, they, they drilled my, um, the whole pattern is screwed up on my doubler. It's not screwed up. Uh, flip it over at the, on the rear spar, uh, there's a little jog in the, in the whole pattern along the spar. So just flip it over, everything lines up. That's what I was doing. Mm, let's see. So I've, I, at this point, I've skinned all the top skins on the left wing. Now I'm skinning all the top skins on the right wing. And in a little bit, you'll see me undoing a lot of what I did over there. Also, as I'm going down to the far end, you might notice that the wing sort of twists a little bit and I keep having to adjust um, or I, I have to adjust the center support quite often. I, I said before that on the far end, that bracket that I made to hold the, the outboard, um, end of the spar, I just drilled some holes and dropped some screws in there like pins. What I ended up doing on this day was actually tightening up those screws so that there was less opportunity for it to twist because when you're putting the clecos in the lower portion which would be the the rear portion of the wing but towards the bottom just the force of putting the cleco into those holes that are slightly undersized will cause the wing to twist a little bit because that's a long uh, lever arm from the bottom to the main spar um so anyways a little tip there if you have that problem just make sure that that uh that both ends of the spar are sort of clamped pretty securely so that you have adequate so okay i'm now removing most of the clecos off of that other wing because um what i found out was that i have enough clecos to do one wing at a time i can't i don't have enough clecos to enough of those 332nd clecos to have both wings skinned um, and held on. So, which was a question, uh, something I was curious about. I bought my tools um, from uh, Cleveland Aircraft Tools and super stoked with it. And I basically just bought sort of what they recommend is the basic kit for an RV-8 build. And um, I kind of wondered without doing any research if, if the number of Clecos I had would um, leave me wanting later on in the build. And so here I am. Uh, so I've robbed all of those Clecos off of the right wing so that I can do the bottom skins and the left wing so that I can do this right here, which is spend a few hours in total. I think it was maybe three hours total for both wings to final size drill everything, which, um, basically I've got a Cleco in every fourth hole. Ah, here's what I wanted to say. I did, as you know, spend a lot of time prepping these ribs and I spent, I think like, I forget what I said, like 11 hours fluting. It's so worth it. I cannot tell you once I, I think I understand fluting now better than I did when I was working on the empennage kit using the string um, with a, a Clico in the first hole and last hole uh, you can look back at that video I'll try to put a link in the description but using a string to line up the holes while you're fluting sped up the process although it was still quite slow because it's a lot of ribs but totally worth it man um, 
skinning these wings was no problem. There was very little need to, you know, use um, a little awl in there to get the holes um, lined up. The holes were where they were supposed to be, which was great. Um, rib prep matters, um, it, especially fluting and getting all of those things straight. So, yeah, I think I've just talked about that for two minutes. That's how much it matters. Um, so this is getting back to the right wing. Um, the left wing, you can see the bottom skins are gone. Once everything is final sized, the top skins stay on, the bottom skins go away. So now I can steal all those Clecos to reskin basically the right wing here. And then I think that the battery dies before I bore you to death with um, uh, final size drilling uh, another wing. Uh, that being said, um, I did finish all the work yesterday that I'd hoped to, which was um, get all of the final size, uh, get all this, the main skins fitted and final size drilled. Um, so at this point, top skins are on, bottom skins are gone. And uh, today I will start working on uh, building leading edges, I think. So that turned out well. One other note before I leave. That little red, cheap um, Harbor Freight uh, stool that you see me scooting around on, I'm telling you, even if I only used it one day, worth every penny. It's like 32 bucks. For this kind of work, it's perfect. Um, yep, that's episode 52. Thanks for stopping by.